<laughs> yes, it's Christmas. In this year's show, we're doing something very special indeed. That's lovely. Good job. We've been following the journeys of three of the charity's hardest to rehome dogs as they desperately search for new loving families this festive season. Merry Christmas, Alan. Merry Christmas. Everyone's very nice here. One of them is Billy here, who is going blind. Not only is he losing his sight, but he didn't have the best start in life. He was rescued from a warehouse found crated with other dogs. It's very sad. We'll be telling you more about him soon. But he's not the only special dog you'll get to meet this Christmas. Good lad. Good boy, don't you? Gentle giant Marvin is long overdue a forever home after waiting for more than a year. He's just so loving, he's got so much love to give. There must be the right family out there for him. Hey, Biggie! What's this? Ready? Twelve-year-old Staffy Biggie has a long-term health condition, making him harder to rehome. Will this happy chappy find a new loving family for Christmas? He's full of life. You'd never think he was 12. He runs around like a, like a young dog, really. You're a best boy. And we'll be telling you about other hard-to-rehome dogs up and down the country, all looking for new families this festive season. Now it's time to find out about our first hard-to-rehome dog, six-year-old blind Billy. It's a good boy. He's been living here at South Godston Animal Centre since oh. September. We've been following Billy's search for a new home in the run-up to Christmas. Oh. I think we're going somewhere. Over to you, Chloe. So Billy is full of character. He's very handsome and he loves his human attention. Good boy. Billy's found it difficult to be rehomed for a long time now because he is unfortunately blind and there's not a lot of people out there who are willing to take that on and commit to it. Billy has a degenerative eye condition, which means over the years he's been losing his sight. He just needs someone around for a majority of the time to sort of give him that support that he needs and the TLC that he deserves. As well as his failing eyesight, he gets nervous around other dogs. Another thing which could be discouraging potential owners. So having a blind dog means that owners just need to be a little bit cautious when he's out and about in public and walking near other dogs um, because he was not going to see them coming and it could startle him. Billy. To make him feel more comfortable, he's given his own space away from the other dogs and it's made to feel like home. He doesn't particularly like to be left a lot because uh, he finds it stressful because he can't see that there aren't people with him. He would like a home where the furniture and things stay in the same place so he can build a mental map of his surroundings to prevent him from bumping into stuff. But as well as places he's comfortable with, it's important to expose him to unfamiliar surroundings too. This area is new to Billy, so new smells, new feelings, things like that. Billy's got to mentally plot out where things are. And it's a bit of a learning process. He's not going to know where everything is, and he is going to have the occasional bump into things, which is good for him to um, carry on just exploring and to learn where things are for him. Dogs, like us, rely on their eyesight, and it's believed they have a more panoramic view of the world, taking in visual information 25% faster than humans. Billy may be going blind, but he doesn't let that hold him back. His other senses are heightened to compensate for his lack of vision. So using his keen ears to hear the ball land and super sense of smell, he's got no problem sniffing it out. Billy! Amazing. Come here. Good boy! Good boy. He's so clever. Hey? Yeah. Billy really deserves a home because he's just so affectionate. Good boy. And he just needs someone to help him along. It is sad to see Billy here, but there is someone out there who will give him all the love and attention he deserves. His blindness shouldn't hold him back from being in his forever home. To tell me more about how a blind dog like Billy manages is behaviour and welfare expert Sam Gaines. Billy seems to be doing okay on this little walk. I mean, how does he navigate? Well, 
As people, we're obviously using our eyes to see where we're going, but dogs live in a world of smell, so he is actually using his nose. But we're also in a very new area for Billy, so you're doing a very important role by making sure he keeps safe and doesn't bump into anything, so he's actually very reliant on you at the moment as well. So what about in the home? How does he manage there? In the home, um, what is really important is just teach him where to go, so putting him on a short lead and that his new adopter takes him round and actually lets him learn where different things are. And once he's learnt the layout of the house, you don't need the furniture, because obviously what you then don't want him to do is find a chair in a different area and bump right. into it. And one of the things that he really needs is a home base. Basically, it's an area where he feels safe and secure, and we can do that by giving him a bed and putting his water bowl there and his food bowl there. So around the home, nice to have his nice, his own little place. Yep. Don't get him at the top of the stairs. No, absolutely not. <laughs> it's just like having a toddler. Yeah, a bit like that. Really? Yeah. He's a beautiful dog. So if you're sensible, there's no reason why a dog like Billy can make a great pet. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, Billy is blind. We get quite a few deaf dogs in, um, and also dogs that might have missing limbs. But in many ways, they're just like normal dogs. What we need to do is think about things from their perspective and just make sure that we adapt our lives, because they can still have a really, really good life and enjoy themselves. Well, good advice. Thanks, Sam. We'll be joining Billy later as he continues his search for a new home this Christmas. But first, here are three very special hard to rehome dogs that are looking for a place to call their own this festive season. This is Arthur. He's a nine year old Mastiff crossbreed. Arthur is a little hard to rehome because he can sometimes be a little bit wary of people, but once he knows you, he's very friendly. You are. This is Jack. He is an 11-year-old Patterdale. Jack's got quite a cheeky and inquisitive nature. Good lad. This is Jess. She's a three-year-old Staffy. She's a really bright, intelligent girl. Jess can be really clumsy with catching tennis balls. Coming up. In kennels for over a year, Marvin the Gentle Giant is on a quest to find his perfect match. There must be the right family out there for him. Hello, Biggie. And can old boy Biggie find his retirement home? Life's for chilling. Good boy. Meet Marvin. Marvin is a seven-year-old Mastiff cross. He's quite big, isn't he? Marvin's our next hard to rehome dog, and it is his size that's the biggest hurdle for potential owners. He's doing well now. That isn't how things started out for him. So this is the front door. In the autumn of 2016, Marvin was rescued from the most appalling conditions. Upstairs bedroom to the right. This housed Marvin. Got a mattress, which is filthy. Piles and piles of faeces. You can clearly see scratch marks on the door. Unbelievably, the man that subjected Marvin to this was supposedly running a rescue charity. Thankfully, he was banned from owning animals for life. <laughs> How you doing, big guy? Hello, Marvin. Hello, good boy. How are you? It's been over a year since Marvin was rescued. And sadly, in all that time, a forever home still hasn't come his way. We joined Anne Mitchell earlier this year at Southport Animal Centre to find out all about him. I think the only reason that Marvin hasn't got his got a home yet is just his sheer size. Marvin comes. The people that have come to see him have not realised how big he is. At a whopping 47 kilos, Marvin's not the only larger dog struggling to find a new home. In fact, the RSPCA has tons of them, overlooked just because of their size. But this playful fella really is a gentle giant. Marvin is a real people dog. He loves company, so he's going to be a dog that needs someone around, someone that's going to spend that time with him. And after so long in kennels, keeping big lad Marvin stimulated is important to the staff here. Good boy. One of his favourite places is the sensory garden. It's full of different activities and smells and plants and flowers. 
I think Marvin enjoys coming into the sensory garden because it's, it's really peaceful. And there's lots for him to do in here. Um, there's a huge variety of stimulation, um, which is what Marvin thrives off. Ready? Ready? Get it. Get it. Stop, stick, 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 stick. Marvin likes to sniff and, and root about and see what he can, can find. And he, he loves to use his nose, so anything that involves finding is, is what Marvin likes. <laughs> Good boy. One of the games he really enjoys in here is the, what we call the find it game. So what we do is we hide treats in the pallet into the little boxes and then we take him away and then he has to come back and find them. So he really enjoys that, he enjoys seeking and, and finding, finding his treats. We are cheating a bit because he can see where they are. Now, I was going to say something, Anne. Find it. Clever boy. So rather than just getting his food in a bowl, we try and do it with a little bit more activity, really. Um, and he has to work a bit more, so I think he appreciates it. Good boy. Good boy. Clever boy. It's estimated that a hefty hound costs at least £420 more a year to look after than a small one, with food costs being a major part of that. Marvin may have a big appetite, but he certainly works it off. Check this out. Sit down. Good boy. And his favourite one is roll. Roll. Clever boy. That was a good one. To top it all off, a spot of agility. Take it away, Marv. It's been quite difficult to see him sat here for so long. We have noticed he seems to have got a bit more quiet than normal for Marvin, um, and he's lying in his bed a bit more, which sort of indicates to us that he really needs that home now. He's, he's, he's just so loving, he's got so much love to give. So there must be the right family out there for him. I'm joining Anne and the big fella himself. So, Anne, Marvin's had over a year in kennels. It's a long time, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very long time. It's Kennel life in general, it's very stressful. We try really hard, but they don't get the companionship that they would have in a home. Is it hard to see a dog like this overlooked for such a long time? It's really difficult, you know, just to see them continually overlooked when other dogs just go. Seems like a nice lad. So he eats, I'm told, a pound and a half of dog food a day. It's quite a sizeable amount, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's, it's a big dinner. Do you put a bit of dry biscuit on the top? Yes, dry biscuit and a bit of meat. Dessert. Yeah. What about dessert? What's he like? Creme brulee? Oh, just a nice bit of sausage, I Little think. Or a bit of chicken. A sausage for dessert? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Spice makes sense. Yeah, it's all right. He's seven now, so he's not in the first flush of youth, is he? He just needs somewhere nice to have a lay down in the odd walk and a pound and a half of meat. Yeah, he does. Oh, Ben. Oh, Ben. You, you can't come home with me. You're bigger than all my children. We'll keep you updated on Marvin's search for a new home later, but before we do, let's find out about our third deserving dog. In the southwest, at Bath Animal Centre, there's an older chap looking for a new home this Christmas. Say hello to 12 year old Staffy Cross, Biggie. Hello, Biggie. Hello. Hey, <laughs> good boy, huh? Animal homes around the country are chock-a-block with older dogs like Biggie, and sadly, they get overlooked, even though they make great family pets. On average, it takes an older dog three times longer to find a home than a puppy. He's a very lazy old man, aren't you? Yes, you are. Spend all your days on your blankets, don't you? It's early October, and Biggie has spent over a month at the centre. Yeah, life's for chilling. He loves a good belly rub, don't you? especially when it's sunny. Good boy. And in that time, he's become a firm favourite of the staff. Let's go see if we can find some friends. Oh, Hi, Biggie. <laughs> Where did they all come from? He's one of our favourites here. <laughs> hey, Biggie, what's he? Today, Nicky and Kirsty are keeping Biggie entertained with a spot of doggy football. Ready? As we all know, it's just as important to keep fit as you get older. So Biggie came to us as a stray, and we decided to name him Biggie because he's got a bigger-than-life character, basically. 
He's full of life. You'd never think he was 12. Runs around like a, like a young dog, really. <laughs> Definitely loves his footballs. Are you going to find me where you left it? Good boy. Well done. Unfortunately, it's not just old age that's held Biggie back from finding a forever home. Sadly, he's living with cancer too. So it's even more important that this old timer gets to live out his days in comfort. So he's on some pain relief just to make sure that he's not in any pain. And as you can clearly see, he's not in any pain. And he's on treatment for his eyes as well. But the home will cover those costs throughout the rest of his life. But Biggie doesn't let his health conditions get him down. He's still full of beans, full of life. Your best boy. Just a happy, happy old boy, really. Everywhere you go, you get stopped by people because of his lovely, staffy smile. There it is. You've got a very happy character, haven't you, Biggs? Biggie's finding kennel life a bit hard here and a bit stressful. He doesn't like being left on his own. Well done. Yeah. Oh, my good boy. We hope for a really nice, warm Christmas for Biggie. He would love to be sat by the fireplace um, on Christmas Eve, waiting for Santa. On a Christmas day, the morning, I'm sure he'd love to be sat there eating your turkey with you. He'd just love to be at home for Christmas and be part of a family. Find out if Biggie can get his forever home later. Good afternoon, I'm Miss PCA, so I've got to send it. But first, we have an exciting development for our blind dog, Billy. It could be that his luck's about to change in time for Christmas. Maria McCulloch has made an online inquiry about Billy, and today she's paying him a visit, one of the key stages in the rehoming process. Animal care assistant Megan Broad is looking after her. Hi there. How are you doing? Um, I'm Maria. I'm coming to see Billy. Brilliant. OK, I'll grab his paperwork. Excellent. I'm Meg, and I'll do your instruction. Lovely. OK, cool. Thank you. If you want to come with me, we'll head this way. OK. Marie is an artist from East Dulwich in London. This is actually Buddy, and Buddy, funnily enough, is a blind basset, and he's one of the locals in Peckham Rye Park. That is just a coincidence. I'm really heart set on getting a rescue dog instead of just going out and buying a dog. I think there are so many dogs out there that need our support and help. And eventually, by going down the different rescue sites that came up, I saw Billy. Billy, you want to go walkies? Good boy. And there was a great video posted of him where he was retrieving his ball, and then he smashed into the camera. Come on, then, Billy. Oh. <laughs> Maria's no stranger to disabled dogs. In fact, she's had two, and one of them had the same issue as Billy. I had a blind dog before, oh, okay. and I appreciate kind of the sense of smell and how mm -hmm. important that is to them. I mean, his smell was incredible. He used to be able to kind of retrieve in the ocean. And that's my goofy blind boy. That's a stunner. Sadly, her two boys are no longer with her. So I've now found myself in a situation after 15 years of owning dogs. It's the first time you come up back to the house at night time, there's no one there. I miss it. You know, I've been blessed to have had two fantastic dogs, and if I could get another one. Yeah, you know, Billy or whoever has got a lot to live up to, to be quite frank. <laughs> uh. Due to his failing sight, he can now be quite reactive around mm. other dogs. What we tend to do is we find him a task to perform when he's out for a walk, so we'll give him a ball to carry, yep. um, and it keeps him a bit calmer. Right, time to meet Billy. He's got a new room, but he's still got his comfy chair and even a radio playing his favourite tunes. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Hang about, it's not Christmas yet. So this is Billy. Hello. Hello. Hello, <laughs> darling. Oh, sweet cakes. Oh, hey, Billy boy. That's right, Billy. Work it. No. So this is Billy's boudoir? This is his bedroom. Wow, yeah. that wouldn't have got bedroom? quite a setup. Yeah. So you can see it's nice and cosy. And it's nice and quiet, so he hasn't got the other dogs mm. barking and stressing him out. Mm. So he can really just wind down in here. And one of Billy's favourite ways to unwind is uh, peanut butter. Where well, is peanut butter here? Wow, peanut butter, Billy. And we'll just get a little bit. Oh, look, Billy boy. Just smear it down. 
The licking really mm. calms him down. It just chills him out. He just focuses yeah. on that, and he's not really bothered about anything else going on. I've got some palette knives at home for art. I can use them <laughs> <Yeah>. and splodge, <laughs> kind of like peanut butter down the hallway. Fantastic. There's a bit in that little crevice there. Oh, good boy. I prefer it on toast myself. Really then, Bill? Good lads. Right, after that calorific peanut butter, it's time to stretch your legs, Billy. Play a bit of ball mm. with him? Yep. Billy, what's this? Blindness in dogs can have a number of causes, including genetics, disease or even just old age. But a blind dog still has the same needs as one that can see. They love to exercise, play and explore. Ready? Go! The charity like potential owners to know all the facts about the dog they're interested in and to spend as much time as possible getting to know them. Good boy! Well done, Billy boy! So if, if I was to commit and, and take Billy home, what, what should I be thinking about? You need to be around for most of the day for him, um, mm -hmm. initially, to help him settle in, yep. build up a routine and a bit of a bond with you. Yep. Uh, once he's calm and he's happy, you can start leaving him for short periods of time, yep. but just build him up to everything really nice mm. and slow. Come on, then. Although Maria is keen on Billy, she still has some reservations. I think he's a people dog at the moment. He really enjoys, you know, that company, but it's the canine side, and I'd want to rest assured that I could take him to the park, he could engage, he could meet other dogs and not see them as a threat. I mean, at the moment, I'd say I'm about a seven out of a 10 on a definite commitment to keep him long-term. The only consideration is the socialization. Good boy. So Maria has a few things to think about. And while she mulls it over, here are three more deserving dogs looking for forever homes this Christmas. Good girl. This is Bella. She's seven years old. She's a very beautiful Staffordshire Terrier. It's a complete myth that they're scary dogs. They're absolutely amazing. Can't really get the smile of her face, if I'm honest. <laughs> That's a gorgeous boy. This is Bruno. He's a six-year-old German Shepherd. Bruno is a really gentle soul. He loves playing ball. He loves cuddles. And he's just an all-round star, aren't you, mate? This is Chico. He's four or five years old, a key to crush. We're looking for an active and experienced home. He's, he's an outdoorsman. He loves the outside. He loves playing. With the proper handling and lots of love, he's fantastic. Coming up, what news for Biggie, the staffy cross that loves to smile? Who's this? Lovely fella. Who's I brought with me? And we'll be back with Larger Than Life Marvin on his quest to find a forever home. Now, if you've been to your local rescue centre, you've found the perfect pooch, the next stage in the process is the home visit. And here to tell me more is centre manager Darren Parrish. Darren, why do you do home visits? Home visits are about supporting people and making sure they're making the right choice and we're matching the right animal to the right home. So it's not an inspection, right? It's, it's about... You, you want to rehome the dog. Yeah, we, we do. It's not an inspection. We're not coming to check up on people's cleaning skills and check their cupboards. We're looking to make sure it's, it's going to be a nice, loving home. The garden's nice and secure. The dog's going to be safe. So what should people be thinking about before the visit? Make sure they've got plenty of tea bags and coffee in and right. can put the kettle on for when we get <laughs> Good. there. Yeah. Um, nice cake. That, Yep, always, always works. A, little, a bit of bribery is always a bonus. Um, but, yeah, there isn't really much people can do to prepare, to be honest. We're not coming to inspect. We're coming to make sure it's going to be the right home for the right dog. As we prepare for Christmas, in East Dulwich, artist Maria McCulloch is doing some preparations of her own. She's getting her place ready for the next stage in the rehoming process, a home visit. A fantastic development for Billy. Been thinking about the perspective of a, of a blind dog. Are there any sharp instruments around? Are there things that are sticking out? So after seeing Billy, hey, Billy, I'm still a little bit apprehensive. One of the key things for me is the size of the flat. I mean, at the end of the day, it's downstairs, so that's accessible to the garden. I think I've got a great outdoor space. But it's hoping that the layout internally is simple enough for a dog like Billy to navigate. Well, Home Visit Coordinator Andrew Corpas will help make that call. Hello, uh, my name's Andrew. I'm here for the Home Visit. Oh, fabulous. Hi. Great. Nice to meet you. Can come I come on in? in? Yeah, Thank absolutely. Right, in you go, Andrew. It's the living room. 
Oh, excellent. Nice. Yeah, nice cool. and cosy in here, actually. Yeah, you could yeah, say that. Yeah, you've got the bed ready and everything. Yeah. Nice cushion. I'm a home worker. If the dog goes here, then I will have a desk set up there, so during the day he will be beside me. Some people go to work mm. uh, and then they leave the dog for a few hours and that's yeah. not the best thing. If you're working from home, yeah. that's excellent. So, the home visit seems to be going well. Good news for Billy. Just head through. Oh, I see you've got some stairs here. But will they be a hurdle for him? That's something to watch out for, but I think, yeah. although he's blind, he'll be able to navigate down these. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't be an issue. So just Maybe take it easy. Take it easy for the yeah, first yeah, few days. Yeah. yeah. Maybe guide him down with, yeah. with a lead. Home visits give potential adopters a chance to consider the implications of owning a pet whilst also making sure the environment is suitable. There's a possibility they might hit himself yeah. somewhere on a, a yeah. corner or something. He's probably about knee height, so hopefully he won't knock into any of the knobs and things in the kitchen. I'm conscious as well of washing machines because there is kind of quite a handle on this. Do you think I should actually provide some padding around I it? I think that's a great suggestion, actually, yeah. Now for the bit every dog loves. Well, here we go into the garden. Oh, nice, yeah. Excellent, you've got nice high fences on this side. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. You'll to definitely have, have to take him around the garden yeah. uh, on a lead first. Explore, smell. Yeah. We've got quite a, a variety of kind of plants that hopefully yeah. texturally for you Billy. You feel them. I've got a studio up at the back of the garden. Oh, excellent. So yes, I'd actually be working up here when I'm doing my artwork. I'm in here during the day. I'm normally kind of spray painting, doing things, mm. um, working on paper, on canvas. Yeah. Um, but there are hazards. So... Yeah, so I would, I would say the best thing would for yeah. him not to come in here. Yeah. Keeping fine. him outside, yeah. not inside. OK. The studio is a no-go. Yeah, so hopefully the garden's clear enough of obstacles and be fine as an environment for a blind dog. Excellent, but yeah. But when do I hear from you? I mean, what's the next stage of the um, procedure? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave here, write, I'll write a report, mm -hmm. send it to the centre, then they'll get in contact with you. Yeah. What's best for you and the dog, basically. Okay. Thanks, Mill, Andrew. Excellent, no worries. It's Thank you for showing me around. Yeah, take Thank care of yourself. Right. Bye, bye, bye. 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 So the home visit, I think, has really gone well. Um, the chap seemed pretty convinced by the environment. I think the key thing with Billy is to give him an opportunity. I mean, you know, there's a lot of energy there. There's a lot of frustration. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll see if Billy can come home. For now, it's a waiting game for both Billy and Maria. We'll be back later to find out what happens. So as Christmas gets closer and the nights draw in, big fella Marvin at Southport is still looking for a new home and Anne's doing all she can to help him. Over the last month, we've been continuing with, with his training um, and obviously trying to get him a home. Uh, we've had a little bit of interest, which has been good for Marvin, but unfortunately it didn't come to anything. What a shame. Bigger dogs can be harder to handle, so the better trained they are, the easier they are to rehome. To maximise Marvin's chances, Anne and colleague Mark have been giving up one evening a week to take him to a large breed training centre. Well, Marv sounds excited. First up, some basic obedience. Barbicle. And trainer Rita Newby, who loves Christmas, is leading the class. Right, if you've got a toy with you, could you throw it amongst the cones? You don't get extra points for hitting me. Any more toys? And I see Rita's not the only one that's cracked out the Christmas decorations. OK, so we're doing leave. The idea here is to get the dogs to leave their toys, and old poor Sky is showing us how it's done. Your dog's got to get paid good wages to walk past. Leave. So if they're leaving, you go to stop. Good leave. Hope you were watching, Marv. Well, just in case, these guys are going first. Hey, I thought you were big, Marvin. Through the cones, very nice. That's it, nice, nice. OK, Marv, away you go. Show us how it's done. This is the one everybody's dog, who, who has a dog that loves toys, just dreads mm. this one. It's a good boy. Yeah. Oh, you've got another toy. Maybe not. You obviously like toys too much. No, it's not yours, mate. 
Now for Marvin's favourite bit of the class, agility. Marvin Cobb. To attract a new owner, it's vital that big dogs like Marvin are well trained both on and off the lead. For the past few weeks, Mark has been leading Marvin around the course, but today they're letting him loose. Yes, boy. That went well, so now time to step it up a li little bit for him. Earlier, he got distracted by those toys. Wait. Now he needs to focus. Come, Marvin, come. That's it, that's it. And they're off. Over. Yes, good boy. Yes, good boy. That was really good. Slow. He's just posing. He's just saying, look how good I am. Two. Yes, good boy. Amazing. Brilliant. <laughs> Shuffed that. <laughs> OK, that was really good. Oh, I made up for him. Marvin's done agility really well, and anyone who puts enthusiasm into him will get it back in spades. He's just a brilliant dog. Yes. That's yes. He's got so much potential. Just needs the right person to go, right, Marvin, let's go together. He's a dream dog. He's going to walk into someone's house and change their world. The thing for Marvin is to give him that little break from the kennels, bring him out. Um, you know, it's just continuing his development constantly. It never stops. And, and I think, you know, we've got to keep doing that for him in the hope of finding him a home. See you, Les. Thanks for having us. Well, it's all paws crossed for Marvin this Christmas. But how about our blind dog, Billy? With just over a month until the big day, We've had some good news about him, and here's Maria to deliver it. I've had my home visit, and thankfully, all of that's passed, and we're en route at the moment to go to the centre, and we're hoping to collect Billy in a few hours. Due to Billy's circumstances, and he hasn't been around a lot of dogs, and he is showing not aggression, but apprehension, we've agreed that it would be good for Billy to be fostered for a period of time. If everything goes fine, I will be the first person to be able to get Billy. And it's our Darren that's taking care of the paperwork. Hiya. 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 I'm here for Billy today. You all ready to go? I hope so, <laughs> yes. OK, so I just need you to fill out your details at the top here for me for the fostering okay. agreement. Lovely. Excellent. There isn't a deadline to it because that applies pressure and what we don't want to do is for you to feel pressured into having to adopt yeah. him. It comes down to that co communication between us. So mm. as we're talking mm. on the phone yep. every sort of few days or every week or something, we'll be finding out how things are going. You're not alone at any point during this fostering. No. With the paperwork signed, it's time to call in the star of the show. Hello, Kennels. We're all done with the paperwork for Billy, so if you'd like to bring him up, we can get him kitted out and off to his home. Who's this? Billy? Uh... Billy! Hey, there's Billy! Hey, Hi, babes, how are you? Hey, mister. Surreal. It's <laughs> surreal to think he's going to come home. Yeah, definitely. The charity is always desperate for people to foster dogs, and they cover vet bills and food. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that is some food. <laughs> Bye. And living in a home environment is much better for a dog than kennels. Ooh, let's go. Yeah. I mean, if he's go. happy to sit down there, it'd be fantastic Yeah, for well, me. we'll just try him there first yeah? on the... Fantastic. Okay. Billy. Like, ready? Yeah? Come, Come on. Billy. In you go. Pop, pop. Can you see it? Pop, pop. Good, good boy. boy. With Billy safely tethered to the seat, it's time to say goodbye. Can you be a good boy? Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Cheers, thank you. Oh, yeah. okay. You're all right, Maisie. He seems relatively quiet. He's cuddled up on, on his little cushion. And I'm really looking forward to seeing his reaction when he gets out and I first walk him through the gate. Fostering a dog gives them time away from kennels and can play a vital role in getting them ready to find their forever home. After a gentle drive, Billy arrives at his new abode. Good boy. Billy, this way, darling. Hey, girl, come in here. Good boy. Oh, what's in here? Yeah, I know you smell your bow. What's over here? There's a bed. Oh, is that Billy bed? Is that for you, darling? I'm feeling pretty, pretty happy about him. He's had an amazing trip here. He's done really, really well. I mean, it'd be fantastic to know what he's thinking right now, all these strange sounds, smells, different textures to, to get a grip of. But, um, yeah, he seems pretty positive, don't you, Billy? 
now for your grand tour, Billy. Good boy, let's go. Maria is doing this on a lead to help him navigate his way around her home. Good boy. How about those stairs, Billy? Got some steps. You ready? Steps. Good lad, steps. Good boy. Well done, Billy. This is the kitchen. Oh, look, we cook here. Do you smell food? I see Maria's padded that washing machine handle. Oh, and there's your dishes. What's this, Billy? Billy bed. Comfy area to call your own. Billy? Oh, look at this. This is your garden. Oh. Wait, what's on the other side of here, Billy? Oh, what's out here? Good boy. A lot to take in, eh, Billy? Should we go around here, baby? Tour over. Maria has a special surprise to help Billy settle in. The centre told me Billy loves peanut butter. So to make them at home, I decided to get a sheet, a little bit of perspex, put it on the wall. So during the day, if I'm going out just to relax them, I'll put a bit of peanut butter on there, a little bit of a treat. Every house with a blind dog needs a peanut butter licking station. Hey, babes, you enjoying that? Right, put your feet up, guys. You deserve it. Farting away like a trooper. Yeah, don't get too comfy, Billy. You've got big farty pants. Yeah, it's the peanut butter. Aren't you? Not my fault. He um, seems quite comfortable, really, really confident. I know it's early days, but it looks pretty positive at the moment. Even though I'm vegetarian, I might make you a chicken dinner. Mmm, chicken. Oh, you good boy. We'll be checking in on Billy later, but now... It's that time again. Here are our last three hard to rehome dogs, all looking for new homes this Christmas. So, this is Pepsi. She's a three year old Staffy crossbreed. She had a real bad start in life, but she's a lovely girl. Cheeky, fun loving, crazy girl. Good boy. This is Zeus. He is a six-year-old American bulldog. He's quite shy of new people, but given the chance, he'd make a really valuable member of your family. Oh, good lad. This is Miley. She is a four-year-old Staffy. She's been at the center eight months now. She's really bouncy. She's really loving and loyal, and she's a trick master. She sits, she rolls over, she spins. Good girl. Still to come, will Biggie be smiling for Christmas? Like two peas in a pod. And the latest on gentle giant Marvin's quest for a new home. Hello. Over in Bath, we have some very exciting news about happy Staffy Cross Biggie. Who's this? Lovely Who have I brought with me? A few weeks ago, Janet Finnegan came to see him and fell in love. I think him and I will get on quite well. And she couldn't resist giving this elderly fella his forever home for Christmas. You were so lucky going home. Biggie's had no trouble settling in. We shall have a quiet Christmas. I'm a laid-back person and he's laid-back too. I tend to fall asleep and when I fall asleep, he falls asleep. I like two peas in a pod. He's so friendly and not, you know, everyone that comes in the house, he thinks they're a friend. I just enjoy him. Like many owners that take on rescue dogs, Biggie isn't her first. I had a, a previous dog and he was, he was called Jasper and he was a rescue dog. So when you've had somebody for 13 years, it's very upsetting. Sounds like Biggie's presence has come at just the right time. He has filled, you know, a hole in my life. He was there for me when I needed somebody. And so I want to be there for Big C now. He needs somebody. Good boy. So he said, I can live with this. Somebody making a fuss of me all day long. As well as making a fuss of this lucky boy, Janet's been keeping on top of Biggie's health problems. So I usually take the pill and put it in the cheese Dogs are very crafty. If they can smell it or see it, they won't take it. Bixie, here we go. Cheese. After Biggie, or Bigsy, has had his cancer medication, he needs his eye drops too. Oh, boy. And the big softy. Mm -hmm. 
want some turkey. And for being such a good boy, a special Christmas treat. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Take that as a yes. I am enjoying my Christmas treat. You've enjoyed yours. Mmm. Mince pies. Huh. Who's this? Go and see Granny and Big Z. Big Z and Janet have some visitors. Daughter Sarah and grandchild Lexi are dropping in with even more treats. Say Merry Christmas, Granny! Merry Christmas, Granny! Oh, <laughs> hello, lovely. What's this? Look, what's Lexi got for you? you I'm not interested. Look. Rip it open. Get getting ripped open. Uh, Can you do Hey, oh, what's wow. this? Lots of Christmas presents. Yeah. Oh, look! Not what you were after, Big Z? I think he's not interested in those Lexi at all. Look, look at that. I think Lexi, you're going to have more fun with those than what Big Z is. Yeah. What do you think I am? A puppy? That's because he's got the only Christmas present a hard to rehome dog could ever want a family to call his own. Squeaky toy. Well, it looks like it's going to be a very Merry Christmas for Biggie indeed, and a well deserved one too. So, fantastic news for Biggie. But what's the latest on Billy and Maria? So, Maria, how's Billy getting on now? I think Billy's made great progress. He's beginning to socialise better with animals. I've got him to walk with two dogs in the local park. It's only fear, really, isn't it, for him? It's uncertainty. We can't see them. Exactly. Gently, gently introduce. Yeah. So, you got any Christmas treats planned for him? Oh, well, I'm actually a vegetarian, <gasps> but I know when it comes to Billy, I've had to give in, so it'll probably be chicken, not the turkey, <laughs> and something with peanut butter as a dessert, because that's his favourite. Oh, is it? It is indeed, definitely. Oh. And what's the long-term <laughs> plan for Billy? Yeah. You're but, foster caring. I am indeed. Until he's ready to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, but it has to be the right place. So until the right special person comes along, I'm very happy to keep him, to give him as much experience as possible, take him out to forests, to the countryside, and possibly, if I change my environment, maybe he'll stay. So you have to move into some sort of converted barn. That's it, lovely. That and would do my art as well, yeah. absolutely. You yeah, and Billy yeah. could live there. We'll all win then, yeah. Right, good luck, Billy. Indeed. Hey, he deserves it. So things are looking bright for Billy, but how about our gentle giant, Marvin? And have you got any updates for her? Yeah, we're really excited back at the centre. We've had a lovely family coming to see him. Uh, it's looking really positive. Oh, fantastic. So Marvin could be on his way to the forever home that he's so desperately needed for over a year. It's fantastic. So from Biggie and Billy and Marvin and everyone here at South Godston, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! I'll get a drink, I'll get nothing. <laughs>